Hi, welcome to homework for third grade, module one, lesson seven. I try to keep my videos short, so if I'm rushing it, I'm probably going to have to this time. Uh, please pause the video or just go back over the parts you want to see again. Uh, feel free to skip ahead as well. Don't forget to write your name. Do that first, or you won't get credit for your work. Number one, draw an array that shows seven rows of two. So we need seven rows of two. One, one row of two, I'll start with one row of two. Two, three, four, five, six. That's seven rows of two. And a multiplication sentence where the first factor represents the number of rows. There's seven rows. That's our first factor times 2 in each row equals 14. You could count them all or count by twos. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. You can do it like that if you don't, <clears throat> if you don't know that fact already. Draw an array that shows two rows of 7. So we need one row of 7 first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we need two rows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's two rows, seven in each row. Write a multiplication sentence where the first factor represents the number of rows. There's two rows, right? Two rows, seven in each row, and it's going to be 14 again because of the commutative property. Doesn't matter the order of the factors, you're going to get the same product. 3a. Turn your paper to look at the arrays in problems 1 and 2. It says problem 1, problem 2. Uh, turn your paper. You can rotate your paper on its side, back and forth. Look at it in different ways, upside down, however you want to. Uh, what is the same and what is different about them? Oh, well, they both have 14. They both have a total of 14, right? total of 14 uh, they have equal rows equal rows and columns And you could say also they're the same array, just rotated. Or turned on its side. Rotate, we had a room there. Uh, we'll keep going. I probably should have started on this end here, then I would have fit it all in. Uh, why are the factors in your multiplication sentences in a different order? So when you go back and look at 1 and 2, this is 7 times 2 and this is 2 times 7. Why are they different? Why are they in a different order? Uh, it's because of the... Uh, in B... There are seven rows and in A there are seven in each row. So the order of the factors, and which one comes first, right? The order of the factors.
factors. Changes because the meaning changes. The meaning of the factor changes. <clears throat> and that's B. And it's, you could say the same thing about two as you said about seven. You could say that there uh, there are two in each row and in in A and that there in in B that there are uh, that there are two rows and that's what the two means. But the, the it's what that's what matters really is that the order of the factors changes uh, because the meaning of the factors changes. Four, write a multiplication sentence to match the number of groups. Skip count to find the totals. The first one is done for you. So two twos is four. Three twos, three times two equals six. Two threes, two times three equals six. Commutative property there. Two fours, two times four equals eight. And then four twos is four times two equals eight. See the factors are switching order, but the commutative property gives us the same product. 5 twos, 5 times 2 equals 10. 2 fives, 2 times 5 equals 10. 6 twos is 6 times 2 equals 12. And 2 six is 2 times 6 equals 12. And we'll go on to the next page. Write and solve multiplication sentences where the second factor represents the size of the row. So we're looking at this array, right? this array first and so the second factor is going to be the size of the row. The first factor is how many rows there are. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six rows times two, right? The size of the row is two equals twelve. And in this one here we have one, two, three, four, five, six in each row. Uh, but there's two rows so it's going to be two times six equals 12. It's still 12. Uh, and, and number 6, Angel writes 2 times 8 equals 8 times 2 in his notebook. Do you agree or disagree? Well, we've been practicing this through the whole homework, so this is I agree. And now draw a race to help explain the thinking. So here we, we could do 2 times 8, right? So that's Two rows of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then our next array is going to be eight rows of two. One, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can count them. This equals sixteen, and that equals sixteen. And that explains it. Seven. Find the missing factor to make make each missing factor to make each equation true. And we're using the commutative property to solve this. We've got two times six. That equals six times two. Uh, something times two equals what is this? What's missing? The seven is missing here. So seven. And here we've got nine times two. Here's the nine. We need the two. And here we have 10 times 2 on this side of the equal sign. And so on the other side we have 2 times, we need the 10 there. Number 8. Tamiya buys two bags of candy. Each bag has seven pieces of candy in it. Draw an array to show how many pieces of candy Tamiya has all together. So she's got seven, she's got two bags of candy. I need an array two bags of candy in each bag, so that's two rows of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Write and solve a multiplication sentence to describe the array. Two times seven equals fourteen. And use the commutative property to write and solve a different 
multiplication sentence for the array. That's seven times two 